PSLE 2016 Challenging Questions Mathematics Paper 1 and 2 Let's look at the first question. Express 0.3% as a fraction. Let's first convert 0.3 into a fraction. We will get 3 over 10. Hence, 0.3% is equal to 3 over 10%. If 1% is 1 over 100, 3 over 10% is 3 over 10 multiplied by 1 over 100. Hence, the answer is 3 over 1,000. Let's take a look at the next question. The average of three numbers is 25. All of the numbers are different two-digit numbers. What is the largest possible number? First, let us look for the keywords. We know that the average of three numbers is 25. So we can make use of this information to find the total. Next, the three numbers are different, which means the numbers cannot be repeated. The last clue given is that all are two-digit numbers. Some examples of two-digit numbers 25 or 41. Now, let us take a look at what the question is looking for. We are required to find the largest possible number among the three two-digit numbers. In order for us to find the largest possible number, we need to know the other two numbers. They must be the smallest two-digit number and the second smallest two-digit number. All three numbers, when added together, will then give us the total. Let us now find out the total. We take 3 times 25 to get 75. Next, we identify the two smallest two-digit numbers. The two smallest two-digit numbers are 10 and 11. In order to find the last missing number, we take the sum of the two smallest numbers and then subtract it from 75. The correct answer is 54. Let's take a look at this question. Some children were divided equally into two groups. There were 20 more boys than girls in group A. There were 12 more girls than boys in group B. 45% of the children were girls. How many boys were there in total? Let's look at the second sentence. We can draw models to visualize the information. There were 20 more boys than girls in group A. We use one unit to represent the number of girls. Therefore, the number of boys is one unit plus 20. Let us now look at the third sentence. There were 12 more girls than boys in group B. As we do not know the actual number of boys and girls in each group, we use parts to represent the number of boys and girls in group B. Since we know that 45% of the children were girls, we can rearrange the information to group the boys and girls respectively. We can see that 1 unit plus 1 part plus 12 will make up 45% of the children. Hence, the percentage of the children who were boys is 55%. From here, we see that the difference in percentage is 10%, and the difference in the number of boys and girls is 8. 
In order to find the number of boys, we must first find 1% by dividing 8 by 10. We then multiply it by 55. Hence, the answer is 44. Let us read this question. The figure A, B, C, D, E has a total area of 26 square centimeters. Find the shaded area. We can see that this figure is made up of two overlapping triangles. Let us find the area of triangle ADE. Using the area of triangle formula, we use half times 8 times 5, which will give us the answer 20. Since we know that the area of the whole figure is 26 square centimeters, we will be able to find the area of triangle BCD by subtracting 20 from 26, which gives an answer of 6. We will now find the area of the second triangle. You will first need to identify the base and height of this triangle. The base and height are perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the area of triangle CDE is half times 5 times 4, which gives us the answer 10. Since the area of triangle CDE is 10 and the area of triangle BCD is 6, we can find the shaded area by subtracting 6 from 10. Hence, the shaded area is 4 square centimeters. Let's take a look at the next question. There is a total of 18 light bulbs which are distributed evenly along three sides of rectangle ABCD as shown in the diagram below. The light bulbs are placed along one length and two breadths of the rectangle. The breadth of the rectangle is 260 centimeters. Find the length of the rectangle. Let's take a look at the first sentence. The 18 light bulbs are distributed evenly along three sides of rectangle ABCD. The second sentence states that the light bulbs are placed along one length and two breadths of the rectangle. Take note that the bulbs are not placed along the four sides of the rectangle. Only three sides contain all the 18 bulbs. There are five bulbs on the breadth of the rectangle. So, there are four gaps among the five bulbs. We also know that the breadth of the rectangle is 260 centimeters. We can find the length of each gap by dividing 260 centimeters by 4. Each gap is therefore 65 centimeters. Similarly, there are five bulbs on the other breadth of the rectangle. From the 18 bulbs, we subtract five bulbs from each breadth. We will get the remaining eight bulbs. Note that there are two additional bulbs from the corners C and D. Hence, there is a total of 10 bulbs along the length of the rectangle. For the 10 bulbs, we can see that there are nine gaps among them. If each gap is 65 centimeters, the total length of the rectangle will be 585 centimeters. Let's take a look at this question. A mixture of orange juice needs 600 milliliters of water and one liter of orange syrup. How many liters of water is needed to make a mixture of 4 litres of orange juice. Now, let us look at the first sentence. A mixture of orange juice needs 600 millilitres of water and 1 litre of orange syrup. 
hence 600 milliliters of water and 1 liter of orange syrup makes us 1600 milliliters of the mixture. So, in one portion of the mixture, there is a volume of 1,600 milliliters. Now, let's look at what the question is asking. You are required to find the volume of water needed to make 4 liters of mixture. Hence, the first step is to find out the number of portions of mixture in 4 liters. We know that 4 liters is equal to 4,000 milliliters. To find the number of portions, we take 4,000 and divide it by 1,600 to get 2.5. Therefore, there are 2.5 portions of mixture in 4 liters. In one portion of mixture, we know that there is 600 milliliters of water. Thus, to find the amount of water in 2.5 portions of mixture, we take 2.5 times 600 milliliters to get 1,500 milliliters of water. The question is asking for the amount of water in liters. Hence, the last step is to convert 1,500 milliliters to liters. The final answer is 1.5 liters.